Hi, we had a friend named Maya request that we read from the book Out of the Dust. So Maya, here you go. Out of the Dust. Beginning August 1920. As summer wheat comes ripe, so did I. Born at home on the kitchen floor. Ma crouched, barefoot, bare-bottomed, over the sweat boards, because that's where Daddy said it'd be best. I came too fast for the doctor, bawling as soon as Daddy wiped his hand around inside my mouth. To hear Ma tell it, I hollered myself red the day I was born. Red's the color I've stayed ever since. Daddy named me Billy Joe. He wanted a boy. Instead, he got a long-legged girl with a wide mouth and cheekbones like bicycle handles. He got a red-headed, freckle-faced, narrow-hipped girl with a fondness for apples and a hunger for playing fierce piano. From the earliest I can remember, I've been reckless in this little panhandle shack we call home. Always getting in Ma's way with my pointy elbows, my fidgety legs. By the summer I turned nine, Daddy had given up about having a boy. He tried making me do. I looked just like him. I can handle myself most everywhere he puts me, even on the tractor, though I don't like that much. Ma tried having other babies. It never seemed to go right, except with me. But this morning, Ma led on as how she's expecting again. Other than the three of us, there's not much family to speak of. Daddy, the only Kelby boy left since Grandpa died from a cancer that ate up most of his skin, and Aunt Ellis, almost 14 years older than Daddy, and living in Lubbock, a ways south of here, and a whole world apart to hear Daddy tell it. And Ma, with only great Uncle Floyd, old as ancient Indian bones, and mean as a rattler, rotting away in a room down in Dallas. I'll be nearly 14, just like Aunt Ellis was when Daddy was born, by the time this baby comes. I wonder if Daddy will get his boy this time. January 1934. Rabbit Battles Mr. Noble and Mr. Romney have a bet going as to who can kill the most rabbits. It all started at the rabbit drive last Monday over to Sturgis, where Mr. Noble got himself worked up about the damage done to his crop by Jacks. Mr. Romney swore he'd had more rabbit trouble than anyone in Cimarron County. They pledged revenge on the rabbit population, wagering who could kill more. They ought to just shut up, betting on how many rabbits they can kill. Honestly. Grown men clubbing bunnies to death. Makes me sick to my stomach. I know rabbits eat what they shouldn't, especially this time of year when they could hop halfway to liberal and still not find food. But Miss Freeland says if we keep plowing under the stuff they ought to be eating, what are they supposed to do? Mr. Noble and Mr. Romney came home from Sturgis Monday with 20 rabbits apiece, a tie. It should have stopped there, but Mr. Romney wasn't satisfied. He said, Noble cheated. He brought in rabbits somebody else killed. And so the contest goes on. Those men, they used to be best friends. Now they can't be civil with each other. They scowl as they pass on the street. I'm scowling too, but scowling won't bring the rabbits back. They're all skinned and cooked and eaten by now. At least they didn't end up in Romney and Noble's cook pots. They went to families that needed the meat. January 1934. Losing Livy. Livy Killian moved away. I didn't want her to go. We'd been best friends since first grade. The farewell party was Thursday night at the old rock schoolhouse. Livy had something to tease each of us about, 
like Ray sleeping through the reading class, and Hillary, who on her speed writing test, put an even ton of children instead of an even 10. Livy said goodbye to each of us separately. She gave me a picture she'd made of me sitting in front of a piano, wearing my straw hat, an apple halfway to my mouth. I handed Livy the memory book we'd all filled with our different slants. I couldn't get the muscles in my throat relaxed enough to tell her how much I'd miss her. Livy helped clean up her own party, wiping spilled lemonade, gathering sandwich crusts, sweeping cookie crumbs from the floor, while the rest of us went home to study for semester reviews. Now Livy's gone west, out of the dust, on her way to California, where the wind takes a rest sometimes. And I'm wondering what kind of friend I am, wanting my feet on that road to another place instead of Livy's. January, 1934. Well, Maya, I hope you like that, and I hope all you other folks out there like it too. As Tigger says, ta-ta for now. Thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. Bye-bye.